So guys, as you can see here, I have removed the high voltage secondary winding and all uh, that remains is the 220 volts primary winding. Another connection to the primary winding will be done over here. You can see these two pins. So guys, and now to the secondary winding, I will be using this wire. Okay, so guys, here as you can see, I have done uh, the secondary winding of the microwave transformer. And here I have given around 12 turns to the secondary. Yeah. Now for connecting the wires to these two pins, I'm going to use these connectors. One for this terminal and the other one. This. Now it's done. Now all I have to do is give an input of 220 volts to these two terminals and I will get around 10 to 12 volts out of these two terminals. Okay, so let's connect it to the power supply and then turn the supply on. At present it is off. Since the input current is going to be high, I am going to turn it on afterwards. Okay. So this has been connected now let's connect the power supply okay so guys you might be hearing this humming sound that means the transformer has started let's connect these two wires and see what voltage i'm getting over here you can see it is around 10.5 volts ac let's connect this bulb and see the illuminance okay yeah it is very bright it has a 12 volts incandescent bulb from a car. Yeah. It is working pretty good. Okay, so guys, as you saw that uh, the voltage was around 10.5 volts AC. And we need around 12 volts at least to charge our 12 volts batteries, of course, and run our 12 volts DC motors at a good current power supply. And also the current is going to be really high when I short circuit it, but I'm not going to do it because it is going to damage. The secondary winding as well as the primary so there is no point in doing that Okay, so guys, as you can see that the transformer has been mounted on this metal base. You can see the bolt holding it and I have placed two of them. And now it's time for me to connect the rectifiers. And I will connect these two rectifiers in parallel to double the amps. Like uh, each uh, rectifier is capable of handling uh, around 35 amperes. So I will connect them in parallel to make it up to 70 amperes for continuous current and their maximum current handling capability for a certain period of time is 
up to 400 amperes which will become 800 amps in parallel although I'm not going to get 800 amps with this wire but still it's for the rectifier and its capability now comes the parallel connection part so for connecting the two rectifiers in parallel what we have to do is connect the positive of this rectifier to the positive of this one and uh, the vertical opposite of the positive is the negative so this is positive vertical opposite means this one so this is the negative and so is this one negative to negative positive to positive and ac to ac ac to ac okay Okay, so guys, everything has been done. The rectifiers have been connected in parallel and the output from the rectifiers have been connected to this capacitor to improve uh, the DC line. And uh, the overall output of this transformer has been converted to DC and is coming out at these two wires. The red and white one is the positive, and the black and green one is the negative. Let's turn it on. Okay, so it has been turned on. You can hear the humming sound. Let's measure the DC output. How many volts am I getting? Okay. Yeah. So guys
guys as you can see that it is working really good but the only problem is that uh, the output voltage is 18 volts and we need 12 volts to charge our batteries and run our 12 volts motors and all and there is one more thing that I would like to share with you is uh, the heating problem with the microwave transformer it heats a lot more than our usual transformers like from UPS or other step down or step up transformers these microwave transformers heat a lot more than usual because of the low number of turns and thicker wires in the primary winding because of which there is a lot of drop and uh, the primary winding is usually of aluminium so guys i would also recommend you to use an additional cooling fan for this transformer okay yeah because it heats a lot uh, now even though the supply is 18 volts at present still i'm going to connect uh, the 12 volts dc motor i believe uh, those motors can easily handle that much higher voltage it is not a very high voltage exceeding the rated but still it should adapt it so first i'm going to use this 64 amperes 12 volts dc motor okay 12 volts denso you've already seen it in my previous videos okay so one of the wires has been connected now i'm left out with these two wires now after i turn on the supply then i will touch this wire to this one and it should start running okay so let's do that okay yeah it is uh, running very fast and i believe uh, this chuck has come out because of a very high rpm yeah Let's run it without that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the primary is really hot i can't keep my hands on it for a longer time yeah it is very hot so guys this was uh, the 64 amps dc motor now i'm going to get on with this starter motor for motorcycle now the capacitor is already charged to 18 volts i can short it all or i can also leave it unshorted uh, because the voltage is only 18 so it is not going to do any harm so same with this one i have connected one wire after i have turned on the supply i will connect this to this okay yeah the supply is on and it is very high current motor let's see Okay, get ready. I'm scared too. Yeah, you can see the high current. The current is really, really high. And that current was really dangerous. I believe the windings must be really, really hot. Yeah, they are very hot at present. Because this uh, motor almost shorted the secondary high current winding. Which is also hot. So I would highly recommend you to use a BLDC fan to cool up this transformer. Because it heats up a lot after continuous usage and you don't want to melt the insulation of the primary winding like the secondary is already covered with this thick wire but the primary insulation is very less it can handle at the most around 200 degrees centigrade so yeah i would recommend that okay so guys that would be all for the part one video and in the next part i will show you how to uh, get uh, the output voltage of only 12 to 14 volts which was our main objective so thank you so much for watching this video guys please hit like and don't forget to share and subscribe thank you